Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment channel and today I thought I'd do a quick tour around the kitchen garden. It's our back garden and we've we had plans basically to move a lot of the sort of labour intensive veg, uh, the stuff that we harvest from every day pretty much uh, in summer to the back garden. And then with coronavirus and all the crisis that sort of come up as a result of that, uh, that made it even more important for us to uh, move most of our summer growing to the back garden. That means the allotment's pretty much focused on growing for autumn and winter and early spring. And it's a nice transition, really. Uh, it's really eased the transition from the winter crops to the spring crops because effectively we've just transitioned from the allotment to the back garden. Uh, and it's going to do the same in autumn. It's going to mean we're transitioning uh, from uh, the summer crops here to the autumn crops uh, on the allotment. Uh, it's just going to make everything a lot easier. So let me show you around. So this is the view from where I'm sitting, which is just on my little hardening off table. And you can see we've got quite a lot going on. So let me give you the quick overview. So basically we've got garlic here, beetroot, lamb's lettuce and peas, peas there's Monash 2 peas, peas for pods, um, spinach, matador, peas for shoots, hardening off area, potatoes, and then we've got salads and spring onions, sprouts for growing for leaves, um, more spinach, red kitten, salads and spring onions, kales and radishes, uh, lettuces and spring onions, and some more stuff around the back. So let me just quickly show you through the details. So this is the patio that gets sun until about three o'clock in the afternoon. And so we do a lot of growing here. So basically along this wall here, starting with these containers here, tomatoes and peppers, then potatoes. And then here, these are most of the early potatoes. And you can see I haven't got all of them started yet. Um, basically we've got, I think we've got about 12 weeks supply of potatoes already in the ground. And we'll start harvesting in about two weeks. Uh, so we're in no rush really to uh, put, to plant more potatoes, but these other containers uh, will be planted up with charlottes, and then these will all be main crops down the back here. And we've got three big containers for uh, climbing French beans, climbing runner beans, and this one for cucumbers and other climbing squash. And these are up against the fence and they're actually tied to the fence because they'll blow over in the wind otherwise. And these containers are kind of stacked up here, but these will be tomatoes and peppers. Ads are basically the summer salads and cooking greens. I've got Navarra lettuce and stir on spring onions and a repeat there. And then we've got these really gorgeous sprouts sown in clumps of three so there's 27 sprout plants there and they will grow on just for greens and they're interplanted with radish and then here we've got um, red kids and spinach lots of people ask what these little pegs are well they're actually to keep the fleece off the veg uh, but there's obviously no fleece on there now, so I leave them in because it just deters the cats. And then here we've got uh, Grenoble Red interplanted with Cantarix, I think it is. Another lovely lettuce bed. Again, interplanted with spring onions. I think those are white Lisbon. And a repeat of that in this bed. And then we've got a selection of kale plants here. Uh, Black Magic, it's a Carvalho Nero type, uh, and Dazzling Blue, again interplanted with radish, and then more lettuce, green oak leaf, and Tessie, pretty nice. 
again into planted with spring onions. And then this bed gets more shade, so it's all the uh, shade loving crops down here. So peas for shoots, those are alderman, matador, spinach, I only just planted that yesterday. Peas for pods, this is a dwarf pea, doesn't need any support. And then we've got corn salad, it's looking really nice. Mainly for smoothie mixes, the corn salad. And then we've got um, mange two peas, Oregon sugar pod. And then we've got beetroot. Again, I just planted that last week. All seems to have taken nicely. And down there, the garlic, which originally I planted for green garlic. Um, we'll see, the, some of the garlic on the allotment is suffering a little bit, so I might actually leave this to mature. I don't know yet. I'll see how the uh, allotment stuff looks in May. And then this is the main kale bed. These kales are all perennial kales around the back. And eventually they'll look like that. Uh, probably in about a year's time actually, because it grows like crazy, the perennial kales. And then all of this part of the bed will be annual kales. And then almost everything else we've got as fruit, so I'll quickly show you the fruit. So first up in these large black plastic containers, these are the blueberries. And now at the back of those are the strawberries. There's some carrots in these from last year. And then on the back wall there, we've got a mix of summer and autumn fruiting raspberries. And then this tree is a cherry tree. And there's more blueberries here, more containers here for uh, all sorts of things, but basically potatoes and sweet corn and the like. This is our afternoon sitting area. And then on the back wall, just coming into life again is the grapevine. It's a seedless red grape. I don't know what the variety is. And then another cherry tree. And this container here and the same at that end is a thornless blackberry which will cover this wall once it's all grown up. And we do quite a lot of containers of carrots so this is our winter supply and we're almost finished uh, we've almost got new carrots to replace them but uh, there's a couple of weeks left there and that's my hardening off bench so i think that is pretty much everything that's going on in the back garden so i just quickly talk about how things will change over summer and into autumn so gradually all these lettuces basically will have all gone and all this spinach and everything um, by July. And all of this will be replaced by um, autumn veg. So all sorts of things, all sorts of different kales, uh, different types of spinach, like New Zealand spinach, things like that, um, as well as uh, radicchio and all those sorts of things. So that all transitions to autumn and winter veg. At the same time in July, all of this will have gone and this will be all of the summer uh, and early autumn salads. And then of course, this will all transition in September again to winter veg. Things like um, field beans, which we use for the shoots, winter spinaches, um, corn salad, miner's lettuce, garlics, all those sorts of things. And just down the side of the house, we've got cherry, apple, apple, cherry, 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 pear, and cherry. We do like our cherries. 
cherries are a lot better here than on the allotment because there's lots of cats around here so we don't get quite as much of a problem with the birds and of course I just love eating fresh cherries and then there sort of our home herb container uh, we've got loads of herbs on the allotment and another tub of carrots yeah, just a little cold frame there there will be another one at the other end there and uh, those are quite invaluable my tender veg is in here the peppers the sweet corn um, the new zealand spinach tomatoes more new zealand spinach beans courgettes tomatoes these are out just because i'm potting those on cucumbers tomatoes a few tomatoes in here and more tomatoes and more peppers so that's it for the back garden in the front garden we've got masses of onions and we will soon have courgettes winter squash loads of kales uh, chard uh, spinach all that sort of thing so uh, a really nice selection in the front and the back garden so anyway hope you like this quick video and i'll see you soon mm -hmm.